Nice. nice. So good. So and I feel like already we've derailed and ruined things mm-hmm. that you guys have been working hard on. Mm-hmm. 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 I will say, uh, Alex said explicitly, she was like, I'm going to write this like it's a brewery game. And I was like, that's wise. It's a good call. It's a good call. <laughs> Must have been feeling those vibes. I think it's, I think you, you knew exactly what to do. Jenna always does know exactly what to do. That's what's, that's, that's one false. of the many amazing but things. Don't about tell Jenna. people that because then they think that I know what's going on <laughs> and I never do. <laughs> always do. This is Quid Pro Roll, a fantasy live play adventure where a party of unlikely heroes embark on a quest to bring dragons back to their world. Before we get going again, as Alex said, Alpha Alex said, uh, that we are doing all of this streaming for Mad RVA, madrva.org. There's a big, very shiny donate link right there when you go to the website. Uh, everything that you donate goes towards helping folks in need around the Richmond, Virginia area, which is where Alex and I are living and existing and having all of our times. So we like helping out our community. Uh, if you are also Richmond local, I suspect you like helping out your community. And if you're not Richmond local, maybe you like helping out our community as well. So uh, go there, donate money, donate time, whatever you got. Give, give them a little love boost their social media, whatever you can do. And in the meanwhile, uh, misty courtyard, old house, dummy thick trees. (laughs) (laughs) What an intro. (laughs) Only the dummiest, thickest of trees. Ford F1 thickies. (laughs) (laughs) The kind of trees... Where when the wind blows, they clap. Oh, <laughs> I hate that so much. That's so no. <laughs> no. Electric slide flashbacks for everybody every time the wind blows. <laughs> Do I need to make another side that just says no? <laughs> you probably should have that one first, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I feel like, is this the kind of, is this like the sort of woods that a satyr would feel super at home in? Yes. Though, again, like I said, you're in more of a courtyard of a fancy house rather okay. than themselves. Okay. It just looks like they didn't do a whole lot of, you know, deforestation to build it. Oh, hey, I like the, I like the feeling of this place. Are you wearing pants yet? I, I'm not sure, like... I'm not. I, I guess I need to be like explicit about this. Um, Ram Big Thigh, he's always Donald Ducking it. I hate everything about the. Why didn't you accept the pair of pants, Moon? He gave he's not you. gonna turn down a gift from Moon. Well, you don't want to be rude. Yeah. He's. <laughs> it would have been nice to have like a weapon or something because he does only have a um, sheer silk rope. <laughs> <laughs> what what class is Ram Big Thigh? A fighter. <laughs> Better pull a stick from a tree then, buddy. You are you are going to be tears of the kingdoming this game. <laughs> Look, I didn't say populate coming out of the bathtub, alright? You're the one who set that up. If Ram Big Thigh is doing a Tears of the Kingdom thing, I bet he fuses weapons by putting them between his thighs. I it's like mm. uh, no mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> no that's going away <laughs> whatever that implication was about to be however that was gonna go no it wasn't I'm just saying he's got powerful thighs that's all I'm saying I hate everything about this interaction we are moving on <laughs> so as if summoned by your sudden presence in the courtyard the large door of the manor sort of opens up. And you see standing before you a young dwarvish man whose human standard age score is, human standard year score is probably about an 18 to a 23, somewhere in that age. He's much younger. He's still fresh faced. The world hasn't really crushed his dreams yet. 
he's he comes out and he's like are uh, you the friends that uh moonsy moonsy sent rambic thigh turns around to face the door as he runs his hands through his hair hey <laughs> oh uh is that a uh, hello it's nice hey kid uh, hello uh it's nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Are you all the adventurers that, uh, that, uh, Moonsy sent? Yeah, we were just talking with Moonsy. Said you could use a little help. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, c- come in, come in. Come out of this terrible cold. Just, just He's half gonna... a head in the mist is like, I don't, I don't <laughs> find it particularly cold. Like, it's a little damp, but it's not that cold. Oh, come out of the terrible damp then. I, it's terrible. Terrible stamp. Yeah, Ram, Ram Big Thigh um, strides on in. Could I uh, get you anything, friend? A uh, cup of tea, a snack, an outfit? Hey, I would love some tea, but I'm real comfortable just what, the way I am. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll go. Uh, tea for any of the rest of you? Oh, I'd love some. Uh, you feral child? Yeah, Goss says no, but as, like, Goss is approaching the door, like, he's ducked down a little further now, so he just has, like, his hair and his feathers and the leaves and shit coming out of it, and he's like a shark in the <laughs> mist. He's like a shark! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It is Goss! All right. So all of you come in, and the, the dwarven boy is going to run off. He's going to start, you know, you hear the clinking and the clanking in the kitchen, and there's a large table carved of solid oak it doesn't look like this was a table hammered together this was a single piece of oak that was carved into an elaborate dining table there appear to be about 20 chairs all told and a magnificent fireplace though it is a cold fireplace at the moment there are tapestries that hang on the walls depicting the family tree of what you assume is this man's family though they are faded the color has sort of washed out over time even the newer additions the thread has lost a lot of its luster so he comes back with us with sort of this tarnished silver tray filled with a tea service and a couple of plates of cookies he's going to set it down and sit and sort of like nervously adjust his clothes and hair almost like he's like walking in for like his first job interview just kind of like oh so uh, what uh what oh I, I was want to say what brings you here, but uh that was that was Moonsy that brought you here and uh the the, the adventure uh is uh so um uh, so uh how are you doing? Quite well, thank you, and you. Oh I'm uh quite well oh I haven't uh introduced myself. My name's Mom. Once you, more? Your name's your name's Mom? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Mom. Mom 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 Hi there, Mom. Yeah, Malma Mom Stoking Good. Mom Stoking Good. I like that name. Well, thank you. It uh, wasn't my idea. Credit goes to my mom. My mom named me mom. Your mom, mom? Yeah, my mom named me. Well, no, my mom, mom. Uh, she uh, she's gone to the great beyond some time ago. But uh, my mom, my mom named me mom. I named you mom. Got it. Uh, for those of you taking notes at home, it is M A L M. I understand that. I as a a human being, Gaswin's still like. Why is his name Mob? What's going on here? Gaz went over here with his inferior gnome brain. Can't understand. Gaz has got a lot going on, okay? He's a busy man. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, um, I, I assume you want to know, uh, why, uh, why I needed you all to come here. Oh, yeah. Is it, is it the fog? Is the fog causing problems for you? We can do something about that. We're, we, we're capable. Oh. No, the area is always very gloomy, but the fog is just some fog rolling in. Uh, no, I need you to, um, well, see, this is going to get a little, uh, family drama-y, so I'm going to need y'all to, you know, strap on in. Um, so, uh, there's been some problems, uh, in my family. Uh, just, just a few things here and there, some, uh, some friction, some, uh, fights, some um, aggressive disinheriting. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot going on. Uh, and um, well, at, at our old family home that was abandoned some time ago, there's a magic item that I think would really help with the familial strife. Uh, but uh, and unfortunately, uh, the place has fallen into a 
a little bit of disrepair, and we may or may not have been cursed by an evil witch, so uh, it's not really safe for me to go through the woods and go to the old the old homestead, but, um, well, uh, I, I need uh, people not of uh, Stoken Good blood, because uh, Stoken Goods go through there, they, uh, oh boy, they become smears real fast. Uh, so I need uh, some of you to go and recover this magic item from uh, Old Homestead and bring it back, and uh, I will use it to uh, hopefully uh, fix some of these issues uh, in the family. So it's kind of a kind of a red mist sort of curse. Oh no, the the mist is gray. No, I'm saying, never mind. I'm not. I don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. You all turn around and. Ram, big thigh, he's about to ask a question, but just uh, first set the stage, he got a, a fire started in that fireplace. Um, so there's there's now a roaring fire, and Ram, big thigh is stretched out on a um, fair skin rug. Um, that wasn't there before, it has appeared. <laughs> there now. Hey, what what was that you said? A, a smear? Oh, uh, yeah, Stoken Goods go through that part of the woods, and uh, we are real fast. Stoken Good. Whoa. And and what what exactly? Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about about what's happening to them. Well, uh, well, I, I, the the ones that are still alive are the ones that try to go through the woods. The ones that try to go through the woods. Well, uh, it's a uh, it's the darndest thing, really. They uh they ended up uh smeared along some trees. No one's really sure what happened to them, but uh, oh, how do you did uh was was it a cleanup? Let me tell you, I needed a scraper. I gotta say, this sounds way less pleasant than the way I was planning on spending my evening. Oh, uh, I'm terribly sorry to hear that, uh, but uh, I can't compensate you for the the terrible, the terrible trouble. The magic item is, uh, you know, I I need it returned safely, so I'm more than willing to pay you for the insurance of its safe return. I mean, I mean, we're we're professionals here, Mom, 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 Mom. We're we're professionals, Mister Stoke and Good. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about all that. We uh, we're we're what you might call adventurers, and so you know we're we're pretty good about once we agree to a contract to pick up a thing, uh, we go and we pick up that thing, and then we bring it back to where we're supposed to bring it back to. Not a, not a whole lot of dilly dallying when you're working with professionals like us. Yeah. Yes, Gaslin, I'm sure, is the one who always safely returns the thing he was paid for and in no way absconds with it. I'm sure that's never happened. Are you looking to have me roll deception right now? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, he's gonna believe you because he's just an innocent, sweet little cinnamon roll, but... Yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, I meant Mal. Mal will not pick up on deception. Yeah. Uh, so no, I was not referring to Gaslin, the least no. cinnamiest of cinnamon rolls. What no. is the opposite of a cinnamon roll? A brick, I... like a flatbread. A flatbread. A jalapeno yeah. cheese popper. Jalapeno cheese flatbread. Mm. I think that's yeah. That's where we're gonna net mm. out. Yeah, right. I was gonna yeah. say garlic yeah. naan. So that's pretty close. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so no, you don't need to roll deception, but I want you to know that I, as the voice in the sky, know of your lies. Just the clouds parting and going. Yeah, it's just the clouds parting. You see my face just just finger wagging, finger wagging, and then fingers like pointing to eyes, pointing down, pointing to eyes, pointing down. Bronla strokes the beard, strokes her uh, the braid in her beard, and she's like, "Stoke and good, Stoke. I, you know, I, I think that my granny's." Fifth cousin twice removes husband's boyfriend's girlfriend. Z dog was a stoking good. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the Barkley division of the family. <laughs> 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 I was not expecting that to land as strong as it did. <laughs> I don't Amazing. think I've ever made Chapman laugh like that in my life. <laughs> And it was that joke. I don't know how to feel about that. Well, uh, it doesn't sound like you've got any real stoke and good blood, though. No, no, no. Okay. Surely not. Okay, so you shouldn't be uh, smeared anywhere. Now, 
Now, is this like a jelly situation? Like Stoke and Goods try to go through there and they just get like covered in jelly? Or Stoke good. Have did. you ever uh, had a, a steak and you know, hit a wall with it? Why would you waste good steak? No. All right. Well, uh, that's uh, sort of the energy we've got going on here with the smear situation is uh, take a steak and really just uh, whack that sucker on a wall. That's a... Uh, Mine just always, like, clatter off to the floor. Oh, uh, no, uh, meat steak. Oh. Not like a vampire steak. Like, like for holding the meat in place while you cook it. I hear you. I'm picking yeah. up what you're laying down. Yeah, those can, those can get absorby. No, it's a little more of a meaty, uh, viscera, um, uh, chili situation. I don't. I don't think you should use a steak like that. That doesn't sound very functional at all. They get smooshed. Well, yeah, I would imagine they do. No, no, no. The the stoking goods, they get smooshed. Oh, your relatives who travel through that part of the woods are made into chilies. I, yeah. I don't think I could have been any clearer than I was outside of giving you some really graphic detail. I'm not giving you graphic detail. Oh, okay. I I was I I thought maybe okay. Well, I'm, that's fine. Gaswin only listens to the bad true crime podcast that get <laughs> way too into the details of the murder. Oh, you can do that with a knife? What? That's amazing. Chapman, you were saying? Um This uh sounds uh pretty pretty gross. Oh yeah, it's terrible. I'm gonna have nightmares for weeks. If not years, there's trauma there. So, uh, we need to go into that woods and, um, find... What exactly is it? Oh, so, um, it's, uh, there's a, there's a family poem that goes about it that my mom has been speaking of. It's, uh, my understanding is it's a mirror, like a, a, about yay big, um, and it lets, uh, lets you see what's in there in their heart it like it reflects the the feelings they have instead of their person oh so like not the blood and stuff no 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 it's uh like your like your feelings you know feelings yes do you think this is gonna help you with your family problems I do. I think that a lot of the issues are a lack of understanding and communication. And I feel like having a real good way to analyze where someone's coming from with uh, without the barriers of language really, uh, really help the understanding communication process. When, um, when the words feelings are said, you see if if you're if you're particularly perspect um perceptive good, uh, perception yes uh, you you might notice a um a flicker of terror across um ramp big by space my only weakness emotions <laughs> i i uh in in my experience sudden radical honesty is not always the best policy uh i Maybe you'll have better luck, though. Like you know your family better than we do, so I can I can only assume that uh, you got the the right stuff in mind. I think uh, I think I'm really seeing an unfiltered idea without the issue of phrasing or words really really would translate the best for the understanding of my family. See, we've had uh, the 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 Stoken goods that are left have been having quite a few uh, say arguments and the. In the last few years. Yep. I could I could see how that might be. Oh, yeah. it was it was vicious. It was terribly vicious. We've got a uh, oh got got some disinheriting going on. We got some uh un unfortunate un unfortunate uh names. We've got uh well, we don't need to go into all that, but uh it, it would be better if uh, there was some good, honest, open communication in this family. And I believe that, that mirror will help our cause. Yep, I'm sure having no filter on all of that will only be a positive experience for everyone involved. See, you understand. 
Gaswin just like turns slowly to the person beside him and just shakes his head very, very subtly. I hope that that's Bronla because otherwise it will be lost totally. We could say it's Bronla. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah Bronla just looks and. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Gaswin pulls the bottle out and takes another swig. Oh, slow. Smaller, smaller this time. Smaller this time. All right, so we're getting this mirror. Uh, yes, if you'd be so kind. Yep. It, at the old homestead through the through the witch woods. The witch woods, you say? Well, that's what we've all started calling them because we can't go through them without uh, being incurred by the witch's curse and uh, becoming sneers. And and does this witch still live in these woods or? Oh, I don't know. Well, I haven't gone in because I don't want to be a smear. So if she does, uh, I certainly am not going to go on knocking on her door. All right, then. And and we'll just know the homestead when we get there. Oh, you can't miss it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a left at the tree that looks like an angry man. And then you're going to keep going until you see a couple of raspberry bushes. When you get past the raspberry bushes, you're going to take a right, and then you're going to pass what, what's sort of like a swampy, pondy area. If if you hit the dead tree, you've gone too far. But then you're going to go ahead and take a right, uh, and then there's going to be uh, a stick. It's going to be sticking up out to the ground there, and you're going to keep on going until you reach uh, what's probably a quite dilapidated mansion at this point. Uh, it's going to have... Uh, the name Stoken Good on the mailbox, though. So that's how you know you found it. Got it. Yeah, I definitely wrote all that down. I, I didn't, but I got lost at hitting a tree because I don't think I've ever felt malice towards a tree before. Oh, I'd show you some trees. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's do it. There's some trees out there worth malice. Yeah. Let's 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 go. Let's go see these trees. <laughs> Fight a tree. What? So, uh, my naked friend, uh, you, uh, you over there with the horns. Yeah, yeah, you, um, ram thigh, still stretched on that bearskin rug in front of the fireplace. Yeah, well, what do you need? So, uh, is that all you got going on? I see, uh, I see your friends over here have, like, weapons. Do you not have anything? I gotta say, I was preparing for a really lovely evening. So, uh, do you need to, uh, I, I have a family armory that I could probably grab you something. Hey, if you got just a, uh, you know, usually I have a, a mall with me. No, uh, let me see what I can find. He's going to get up and he's going to walk out. He's going to go some distance before you're pretty confident that he can't hear you, but you do hear like a soft clattering and banging coming from wherever he is. This guy's nuts. Yeah, I don't think he understands what's going to happen with his family when he finds out what their real feelings are. Even when someone's mean to you, they're still holding back a little. So we have to to uh, find this thing and destroy it, right? No, no, no. We're, we're still going to give him what he wants, but maybe we should prepare him beforehand. Hear me out. Maybe a crazy idea. Goss, back me up on this. Okay. We go... We get the mirror. We come back most of the way. We stop in at Moonsy's. We trade it for a different magic mirror. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe Moonsy's got one of those to like you ask it questions. And it shows you the weather. Yeah. Figure out the perfect weekend to go to the beach. This might be an odd question for the rest of you, but have you ever intentionally gone to Moonsy's? No. But there's a first time for everything. That's true. I don't think I've intentionally gone anywhere, so I feel like this this will work out. What a life you lead. Yeah, I mean it's pretty it's pretty good. It's cool stuff. So um it's not going to be long before uh he's gonna come mom's gonna come back and he looks a little bit defeated, but he is going to hand a long-handled cast iron skillet <laughs> okay. to ram big thigh. Like it's it's it it has like the length of like a pizza paddle, but it's iron and a skillet. So you're not entirely certain what culinary purpose this had, but it I... it can do some beating. Probably seared some steaks with it and cooked them for too long, and they ended up 
rock hard. The problem is, is that like you try to cook with it, but you're also afraid of the oil spitting up at you. So you're like as far away as possible. <laughs> so you can kind of like shake the pan, but also stay very far away. This way also the handle doesn't get too hot to touch. Yeah, how can it when it's 16 feet away from the stove? Uh, question. Is there a, happen to be a, um, like a suit of armor? Yeah, it's dwarven size. Um, okay. Uh, dwarves have big chests, right? Yeah, generally. Like, okay. In my, like, I just think about this now. I feel like I always kind of assume dwarves, like, their entire torso is, like, human size that's usually so how they're they depicted just, okay good okay so. that's just how i'm shaped okay <laughs> <laughs> ram big thigh is going to uh take just the breastplate from that and uh slap it on and put the um put the the, the silk bathrobe back over it all right so you are like wait over it not put the armor over the robe i can't decide which would it would which which is the better vibes the silk under the the no nah. the silk under the yeah, yeah gotta yeah. be you gotta, gotta be okay. loose nah let it flow mm-hmm. maybe let it flow so you you take you take the fry the you take both the frying pan and the ancestral chest armor and just put it on and then put your robe back over it mm-hmm. um you look like a maniac <laughs> an absolute maniac hell yeah uh so real quick uh this is just a sidebar donate to mad rva uh and if you guys are going to any convention that any of us will be at please cosplay this <laughs> Please cosplay a satyr with a long-handled frying pan of chest armor piece and just a silk bath robe over it. I don't. Please. Yeah, please. I mean, if you're cosplaying a satyr, you do can wear, have yeah, wear, pants. wear yeah, fuzzy like, pants. Fuzzy pants. Um, yeah. If you're going to wear something kind of skin tightish, have do, a man the, bun. do a dance belt underneath whatever you're going to wear as pants. Like, yeah, I, just, I cannot stress this enough. Don't want to see you junk. Appreciate y'all the same. I guess I would die if someone <laughs> came like dressed as this. This would be so good for me. I'd be it would be so funny. <laughs> such a, Maybe that'll be what I that'll be my cosplay for Dragon. It's such a Con. specific that'll be that'll be it's what such I a do. specific QPR pull. Like they don't want to dress as one of the main characters. No, they want to dress as a side character who only looked like this in two episodes of a stream that went up on main feed. Yeah. I've seen weirder cosplays of more obscure things. And I'm just saying, this would be a fun mm-hmm. cosplay to do. Just saying. Though the problem is every time I say that, Josh has to help me army crawl back into our hotel room because my feet have given out because of the shoes that I decided to wear. So, now that Ram Big Thigh is armored up, are all of you prepared to go out into the Witchwood? Ready. Let's do this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you head out into the mists, uh, past the ominous trees, into a space of more and more ominouser and ominouser trees as you go. You're going to remember vaguely the directions. Actually, I don't know that you do. I'm going to have roll history. Personal history. 17. 16. 18. (laughs) Also, I think that's the highest roll that Alex has ever had on anything ever. (laughs) Yeah, I think that that's genuinely true. <laughs> I don't know nothing about nothing. That had very I got a rock energy from Josh. Uh, I got three, so so Gaswin's going to be trailing behind the group overall because he's not terribly sure where you guys are going. But the three of you, it is steel trap. You remember what stick you need to turn at. You remember when you've gone too far. You remember the trees, the trees. As you go deeper and deeper into the wood, something is wrong with the trees. They start barking. Um, 
Trees, oh, trees, no. and their bark. You know how it is. Yeah. Worse than their bite. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're known for their bark. You are going to. There's going to be something that feels wrong. As you go, you notice the trees are getting denser and denser. And then you like turn back and you notice the way that you came doesn't seem as open as it once was. There is this claustrophobic closing feeling. And as the wind blows just softly, instead of the soft rustling of, of leaves that you'd expect to hear, you hear this creaking groan. Goss, get ready. Remember those trees I told you about? The stupid ones or the mean ones? The mean ones. All right, I'm ready. Editor Scott here. If you'd like to help support the Mutual Aid Distribution in Richmond, Virginia, or MADRVA for short, please check out madrva.org and find out more. You can help volunteer, donate supplies or money, or even just shout them out on social media to help spread awareness and help others in need. Again, that's madrva.org. Solidarity, not charity. <laughs>